All right, let's bring in our guest. Among NFL quarterbacks, he still ranks in the top 20 all-time passing yards, passing touchdowns, and game-winning drives. And according to me, he still ranks in the top 10 in best mustaches in NFL history. <laughs> Pro Football Hall of Famer, the great Warren Moon is here. What's happening, Warren? I'm great, Sal. You know, that was my uh, Tom Selleck look back in the day. So I was I was known as the black Tom Selleck. <laughs> well, there's worse things to be known as. That's good. Yeah. Tom Selleck, Burt Reynolds, Warren Moon. I would say those are the top three there, right? And Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. Okay. That rounds out the uh, Mount Rushmore. There How you are you doing? How is uh, Super Bowl week going? Uh, you're in L.A. Is, uh, is there something you look forward to usually, Super Bowl week? Um. Not anything particular. I, I, I love getting together with friends of mine that I haven't seen throughout the year. You know, we're all so spread out. So getting a chance to catch up with different guys around the league, different uh, people that I know in the league. Um, it, it's some of the social events that are going on throughout the league. That's the best time when you can catch up and just say hello and maybe have dinner or have a cocktail with some of the people you haven't seen in a while. Yeah. And you're sporting a nice jacket. I was wondering which hall of fame jacket do you want, do you want to wear the Canadian hall of fame or the pro football hall of fame? Do is it weird to have to choose? Not really. It just depends on the, the, uh, the, the function that I'm going to like tomorrow, we have the hall of fame luncheon, uh, mm -hmm. in the afternoon. So I'm going to, to wear my gold jacket to that luncheon okay. and if i had something to do with a canadian uh canadian affair i'd wear that canadian jacket so i have a lot of variety in my closet <laughs> yeah well like i said you uh one of the great quarterbacks of all time and now we have some great quarterbacks in these playoffs you saw mahomes you saw josh allen stafford and burrow in this game brady of course was there ever a guy on the other side of the field when you were playing that you felt oh man please don't leave time on the clock for this guy yeah, uh, there was a couple of guys, but one in particular that beat me in the playoffs uh, in the last minute and 58 seconds, John Elway. You know, we, we had them beat up in the playoffs in a divisional round, and he gets the ball back with a minute 58, two timeouts, and he takes his team all the way down for the winning uh, for the winning score. So uh, it was nothing I could do about it because I'm on the sideline watching this happen. He mm. converted two fourth downs on that drive, and I'm, I got a Gatorade cup in my hand. There's a picture of me smashing it into the turf i was so pissed off that every time they converted you know a fourth down and kept the clock going i mean kept the uh the drive going uh so he was one guy but you know i played in an era with uh with dan marino and mm -hmm. and uh jim kelly and of course john elway dan and joe fouts, Montana. right fouts too right fouts yep. was gone right before oh, i he got was a little there. before you right yeah but I had uh, uh, J Joe Montana and Steve Young at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of great quarterbacks. Every guy I just mentioned there is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. All those guys were great in the last two minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And what about the quarterback matchup in this game, Burrow and Stafford? Who do you look at? Uh, who has the edge, would you say? You know, it's really hard to say because both of them have played great to get their teams here uh, to this point. Uh, Joe Burrow, because of his youth, I think, Everybody's really surprised that his team is here because he's only been in the league less than two years if you look at the number of games he's played. But every game that he's been behind in the playoffs, he's somehow been able to help his team come back and win. And I think that's a tremendous confidence for the Bengals to have that they feel like no matter what happens in this Super Bowl, they probably will still have a chance to win. That's a great confidence mentally to have coming into this football game. Matt Stafford has played his best football in the playoffs, only turned the ball over one time. Uh, has made some big throws and big time moments in games. So both of these guys are playing at, at a big time level. And that's what you need for your quarterback when you get to a game like this. Mm -hmm. Now we'll just have to wait and see who takes best care of the football. Because I really think it's going to come down to turnovers. Turnovers are huge momentum shifts. And they're also huge field position uh, advantages for sure. the offense. So the team that takes best care of the ball, I think, is a team of wins. Yeah, it does seem for a guy who's under fire and under pressure so much, Joe Burrow, 51 sacks in the regular season, um, you know, took nine sacks against Tennessee in the playoffs and seems to overcome all of it and doesn't turn it over, right? That That's the weirdest part of it, right? Not not even one stupid play in, uh, in all that that I uh, discussed is a, a turnover. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the poise that he has. And even though he was sacked nine times, didn't turn the ball over, like you said. Mm -hmm. But if you look on the other side of the ball, Tennessee turns it over three times with three interceptions. So that was the difference in the ball game. It allowed them to get back into the game and allowed them to make the big plays down the stretch. So, again, turnovers are going to be huge, and we'll just have to see who takes the best care of the ball. I love hearing about quarterbacks in the huddle, different ways they kept the team loose. Were you strictly business in the huddle, or did you ever make jokes? 
it depended on the game. You know, if you had it in hand, you, you maybe made it a joke. But uh, for the most part, I was pretty serious in that huddle. I didn't want anybody talking once I came into it. There's, there's you know, 10, 12 seconds before I actually come into the huddle as I'm getting the play, the guys can make their adjustments as well, whether it's the offensive linemen saying something to each other or the receivers may be saying something. But once I walked in there, it was no business. It's time, it's time to get the play called so I can get up to the line of scrimmage and have as much time as I need to maybe change the play. All right, I'm going to give you a couple quarterback props. Tell me first thing that comes to your head. Any quarterback to pass for over 400 yards, you get over 5-1 to one odds on that. Is that a possibility in this game? I think it's a possibility for the team that's behind, uh, depending on right. how far they get behind. If they have to throw themselves back into the game, that could easily happen, especially in this day and age. Yeah. All right. Cooper Cup, obviously a big I feel like they work him in early, right? You get rid of the butterflies, throw a couple short routes to Cooper Cup over or under 31 and a half for his longest reception. For his longest reception, I'd say under. I think he's going to catch a lot of balls within the 12 to maybe 24 range, but uh, mm -hmm. over 31. May, might not have one of those. Okay. And what color will the Gatorade be? I think nine out of the last 12 years, it's been either orange or blue. Well, if you're the Rams, you want blue Gatorade. And if right. you're uh, Cincinnati, you want orange Gatorade. So I would hope they'd have those colors. <laughs> right. They have those two. Probably yellow could figure in too somewhere. Uh, all right. Well, listen, I want to ask you, uh, well, first of all, who's going to win and what score? I think the Rams in a tight win, I think – 30 to 27, something like that. Um, I just think they're a little bit better on paper, but, you know, this Cincinnati team just doesn't go away. So I wouldn't be surprised if they came back and won the game, but I think the Rams going in is, is where my bet would go. All right. Now, listen, we've talked to uh, Calvin Johnson this week. I'm friendly with uh, Tony Romo. Let me ask you, are you the greatest NFL player of all time who's never won a Super Bowl? Be honest with me. I make a, I can make a strong case. <laughs> I can make a very strong case. I'm not one to talk a lot about myself, but I can make a strong case. I want to hear it. I, I, I want you in there. I don't know. Sign a one one week contract with uh, one of these teams. Get in there. I think you're still good. Get that run and shoot going. You know, I could. Uh, I look good on the sideline in the uniform. I'm not. I'm not fat and overweight, and uh, I carry a clipboard very well at this point in my career. <laughs> All right, maybe that's enough to put you over. Uh, Warren, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Good luck. Have fun All right, this weekend. Sal, thank you. Take care of yourself. All right, take care.